From our studios at the corner of 8th and Walton in Bentonville, Arkansas, welcome to Saturday Morning Meeting, where we cover Walmart, Sam's Club, and the consumer product companies that are represented on their racks and shelves throughout the country and around the world. I'm Derek Ridenauer, and welcome to our show. Our focus is on the insights, trends, and best practices to help you as a supplier grow your business in the world's largest retailer. Thank you for joining us. And coming up today, I'll be talking to Colby Bielan from K-Stack and what suppliers can do to better manage their logistics and shipping. And reviewing this week's headlines with me are Andy Shook and Ross Culley. But first, the headlines. Retailing Today reports that an Accenture survey indicates an increase in holiday spending this year. Consumers now report an average holiday gift budget of $646. That is up 11% over last year's spending. Consumers indicate that they are less cautious about spending this holiday and are instead taking a sensible approach to their purchases. Traditionally, Walmart leaves big NFL ad buys to its less thrifty competitors. But according to AdAge, that's about to change this year. Walmart plans to target its Black Friday shoppers with Thanksgiving game ads. The AdAge article also notes that some Walmart suppliers are likewise stepping up their NFL advertising during the Thanksgiving holiday. Walmart hopes to save money on deliveries to smaller stores by using its super centers as many distribution hubs. A recent story by Reuters offered some details of the plan, which include coordinating daily deliveries from the super centers to the smaller footprint properties, a move that could keep the shelves stocked without having to use large trucks. Meanwhile, arch competitor Amazon is likewise trying out a new distribution logistics. The Fayette Advocate reports that Amazon sends its own workers into supplier warehouses, where they set up a packaging and delivery department. The suppliers bring the goods to the Amazon workers, who then pack and ship directly from the supplier's warehouse. Social media users have long used their Twitter and Facebook accounts to deliver criticism to businesses. Until recently, Walmart took such criticisms in stride. But Digiday reports a policy sea change. Walmart now has a dedicated social media team that focuses on engaging social media commentators and addressing their concerns. Walmart hopes that social media engagement will help the retailer dispel myths and encourage open dialogue with consumers. A quick update on the situation in India. Walmart Asia head Scott Price plans to meet with India's Commerce Minister Anand Sharma on November the 1st. First Post reports that Price seeks clarification on India's retail rules, something that Walmart, as well as other foreign retailers, need before making decisions about their Indian operation. Folks here in Bentonville can look forward to some world-class barbecue today. As the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour wraps up the season, members of the public are encouraged to join the fun at the Sam's Club Home Office located at 2101 Southeast Simple Savings Drive in Bentonville. The event features country artist Keith Anderson and Bush, Bush's Baked Beans mascot, Duke the Dog. Stay tuned because when we come back, I will be talking with Colby Beeland from K-Stack about supplier logistics, all when Saturday morning meeting continues. GigWalk is an on-demand mobile workforce that can collect data and do work at retail. Businesses use GigWalk for retail audits, merchandising, and much more. With 350,000 smartphone-enabled workers available on demand, you get unprecedented speed and coverage across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. And all work is reviewed for quality and accuracy. Visit GigWalk.com to learn more. Today's show has been sponsored in part by 8th & Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. Since 2006, 8th & Walton's By Suppliers for Suppliers approach to education and services has helped thousands of supplier teams grow their business with Walmart. Visit 8thandwalton.com to learn more. Welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. Joined now by Andy Shook and Ross Culley, both of the Harvest Group. Guys, thank you very much for coming in. I want to talk to you about holiday sales. Accenture in retailing today had an article about their forecasting holiday sales are actually up. Ross, I know you happen to disagree with that. What are you, what's your take on it? Yeah, I'm not so sure I agree. When you look at the consumer, I think they're still under pressure. You look at everything that's going on in Washington, healthcare coming in January, there's a compressed holiday calendar. Uh, I think it's going to be tough. Andy? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think, I think we're kind of coming into that place where there's just a lot of just a lot of unease in America right now. And I don't know if they're necessarily going to open their checkbooks like they're saying they are now, especially right. after just what happened with the government shutdown and everything else was going on with Obamacare and trying to figure all that stuff out. I don't know if America's ready to spend this holiday season or not. 
when the article had pointed out that consumers this year, forecasting, of course, that consumers are moving from cautious, which is where they were last year, to sensible this year, do you think they're going to make smarter buyers or smarter decisions in what they buy and, and maybe spend a little more? Or do you think overall they're going to just kind of play it safe and keep it? Well, I think the article also talked about Amazon.com or, you know, going to the dot-coms, that that's actually going to be a, a larger uh, percentage of sales this year than maybe what it was last year. And, you know, I mean, I think the shoppers are getting a lot smarter as far as figuring out what the prices are, what they can get things at. So, I mean, I think I think the shoppers are going to be a lot smarter with their dollar this year as well. Do you think they're going to look at more discounting? Because that, that was another thing that was pointed out in the article was that consumers are going to expect a 30% discount uh, as particularly in the Black Friday, whereas historically it's been about 25%. Last year, they went to 25%. So what pressure does this now put on retailers and suppliers if consumers, if they are truly going to spend more, but they're going to be looking for those deeper discounts? Do we see it wait? I mean, Ross, you pointed out we're going to have a compressed holiday season, six days fewer this year than last year. Do you think there's more waiting to, for those bigger ticket, or do you think they're going to get out there early? I think retailers are going to get out there early, and I do think consumers are going to be looking for value. Um, the, a big question for me is retailers' bets on inventory. And so what, what items and categories do they actually bring the inventory in on? Um, there's been an inventory crunch uh, at Walmart in, in the last quarter, and so it'll be interesting to see. I think they will make some bets in areas, but um, I think that you're going to see retailers be cautious uh, in some areas as well. Okay. Next article we want to move into is uh, Walmart made some announcements this week that they're or, uh, within the last week where they're going to really go big with the NFL, particularly on Thanksgiving Day, uh, and push and do a lot of advertising to kind of draw people in. Not only thanks for Black Friday, but obviously Thanksgiving Day. Uh, and, and then I'm going to parallel that with another story that we've done about Walmart wanting to drive beer sales. So to me, this makes sense that they would be advertising with the NFL. A lot of beer sponsors, Anheuser-Busch, one of the biggest. Andy, what's your take? You know, I, I, think it, I think it's great that they're advertising more with the NFL. I mean, when you, you look at the way people watch TV now, I, I don't even watch commercials anymore. I mean, I'm flipping through with the DVR, and I'm trying to get through the commercials as fast as I can. But when you go to live TV, the, you're watching football, you, you don't do that. Because you're watching your team, you want to watch it live, and, and it's a part of it. And I think it's great that, uh, that Walmart's going to be making this kind of an effort uh, towards the NFL. And I think it'll pay off. I think it'll pay off real big because I think people will start seeing the ads and starting to understand, you know, what Walmart's trying to do. Because, you know, we know that, you know, with EDLP, the prices are the best you can find anywhere else in the marketplace. And, I mean, you know, it's a great place to shop. Yeah, I think it makes a ton of sense uh, from a media standpoint, whether it's live sporting events being a great place to advertise, timing of the year, football season, as we talked about, holiday. Right. But then also just the demographic of Walmart, um, both their associates and their customers. I think it matches up great with the NFL. I think it's a really smart move. And do, we, do you think that we can will eventually see Walmart become a true NFL sponsor? Because at this point, they're not. They're buying time during the games, but they're not an NFL sponsor like PepsiCo or like uh, Anheuser-Busch or P&G. Do we see that in the future? I, don't, I wonder if they'll do like maybe like some co stuff, maybe with Miller and with some, with some of the other beer brands and things like that. You know, you, you wonder if maybe they kind of group that stuff together or if they'll do it on their own. Yeah, I think all those sponsors you just named are, are big Walmart suppliers. And so I think <laughs> there's, a, there's a chance that they're going to uh, be able to partner with the NFL in, in creative ways. Maybe do some co oping Yeah. Okay, and then the final story that we wanted to discuss, Amazon announced this week, they've been working on it, where they're actually taking their fulfillment centers inside their suppliers' warehouses. And Ross, you, had a, you were talking about P&G and Amazon teaming up. What does this mean to, con to the consumer, obviously, and then what do you see the impact for, on, for Walmart, who's bat been battling Amazon? Yeah, I mean, a great Wall Street Journal article. Uh, I think it, it's a very big innovation in the supply chain. And so when you look at e-commerce, the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, consumer desire is speed. And so when you look at the compression of the supply chain from the place where the order is received and fulfilled going right out the door to the consumer, um, I think that's interesting. Now, Walmart's obviously combating that with um, using their stores as distribution centers. And so I think some really interesting innovations in the supply chain right now coming out of Amazon and Walmart. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Mm. Andy? Yeah, you know, the other thing we, we talked a little bit about too is Walmart's move with the, the neighborhood market or the smaller format stores actually using the larger, uh, the, like super the super center. center stores as their fulfillment or as their uh, um, kind of their warehouse. And it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out as well. But, you know, I mean, with Walmart, you can order something. It's right there at the store. You can bring it into the store. 
Um, you know, so they already kind of have their distribution network set up and whatnot, but right. this is an interesting move by Amazon. It'll be interesting to see how much they save by doing that, and will Walmart put pressure on their suppliers? You know, with Sam's Club, it's already being done. It's right. being done in a different way. With Walmart, we ship it out to a place, and then it's shipped out from there. So they hold inventory, and they have to do that. So it'll be interesting to see if that's going to put any pressure on some of these other suppliers to do the same type of thing with them. All right. Well, we're going to leave it there. We're out of time for now. Guys, thank you very much for coming in. And we want you to come right back because we're going to sit down with Colby Beelan from K-Stack and talk about how suppliers can save some money on logistics, all coming up when Saturday Morning Meeting continues. Cameron Smith & Associates is supplier's first choice in recruiting the competitive Walmart supplier job market. We connect qualified candidates to CPG jobs in Northwest Arkansas and across the country. CSA also sources sales and marketing professionals for companies providing advertising, marketing, merchandising, and data management services to suppliers. Contact us today at csarecruiters.com. Today's show has been sponsored in part by 8th and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. 8th and Walton offers a variety of services including new supplier onboarding, scorecard optimization, and analysis and reporting. Visit 8thandwalton.com forward slash services to learn more. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. Joined now by Colby Beeland. He is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for K-Stack. Colby, thanks for coming in. I want to talk to you a little bit about what K-Stack does and what kind of benefits they can add to Walmart suppliers. So first question, tell me about K-Stack. Sure. Uh, K-Stack is a collaborative third-party logistics company. Um, I use the word collaborative because that is the approach that we try to take with both the supplier and the retailer. From a third-party logistics standpoint, we provide every facet of the supply chain. So if, whether you're importing product from overseas or producing it domestically, uh, we will help you with the inbound transportation, we will do the warehousing, we will do all the fulfillment services within our warehouses, so whether it's display building, uh, kitting, repacking, uh, relabeling, just order fulfillment, and then distribution to Walmart distribution centers. So you say that the majority of the suppliers that come to you are going to be those smaller smaller suppliers and, I, and I'm sure you have some of the bigger ones too who are trying to manage some 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 additional stuff but would you say your kind of focus is going to be on smaller our core competency is helping small to mid-sized CPG companies uh, okay. distribute to retail so um, the the beauty of our model is we have a collaborative consolidation program established with Walmart so we are able to take multiple small to mid-sized CPG companies who typically have small orders, which would be shipping LTL or parcel. Which drives your costs up. Which drives cost quiet. per case up. Uh, if they were shipping either less than truckload or parcel to Walmart, and we can consolidate those into full truckloads. And then, of course, you have longer lead times when that comes in. Actually, Somewhat. no. Uh, we're able to sh shorten their lead time. Even so um, when you ship LTO, and when you're not part of consolidation, Walmart replenishment system can cut your orders multiple days of the week. And when you're shipping LTL, there are many different facets of transit time required. So if you happen to ship an order on Friday, say you get an order on Thursday and you're ready to ship it on Friday, that product may sit at the LTL carrier's terminal over the weekend and, and not even ship okay. out until Monday. So you've added two days of it just sitting before it starts its three or four day journey across the United States, depending upon where it's going. Uh, where in our model, um, if we ship it on Friday, it's going to move in a full truckload environment over the weekend and potentially deliver, depending on the length of haul, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. Okay. So, well, what are, in working with all these suppliers that you've worked with, mm -hmm. what are some of the biggest mistakes that you've seen suppliers make? Uh, mismanagement of inventory is probably the single largest mistake, not understanding uh, how to manage the inventory or how to move their product or distribute their product in the most economical or efficient way. Um, Walmart typically has three types of purchase orders that a supplier is faced with on a daily basis, a type 03 or buyer driven order, a type 20 which is a warehouse order, or a type 33 which is an assembly order. Um, so if those are cutting on multiple days of the week and they're shipping them as individual orders, 
it's even driving their cost per case even higher. Whereas in a consolidation model, we're able to consolidate those orders, create full pallets, which drive down your cost per case, on a, and then ship it in a full truckload environment, which even drives your cost per case down even further. Let's talk about some of the big wins that you've seen with suppliers okay. that, have, that have come to you and, and some of the solutions you've, you've provided and then the, some of the results without going, obviously being too specific here. But. Sure. Um, we've taken companies that had four or five employees and say $100,000 in sales and watched them grow into $100 million companies. Uh, and we've taken large companies that uh, had a supply chain that wasn't optimized, it was sub-optimized, and we helped them optimize it and have saved seven plus figures in their supply chain. So um, typically what we are able to do is help customers have better service at a lower cost and optimize their network. So uh, whether it's Walmart or any other retailer, uh, we provide the solution to drive their total cost down. So some of the benefits coming to you, uh, because you do work with some other retailers, mm -hmm. um, they can really kind of cut costs across the board. So if they're calling on Target, they're shipping to Target and Kohl's and, and Kroger, one place to ship to you. Exactly, and that, that is the beauty of our model, is we are not, Walmart is a very key component in what we do. It obviously is most of our customers' largest customer. So being able to provide those services and those cost savings are important. But we do the same thing with several other retailers, the same consolidation type programs. So instead of having to carry a standalone inventory for one retailer, which is not very it's not efficient optimized or efficient for, for their network, they can give us all of their product, their, their entire product mix, and we can distribute and fulfill and drive their cost down for not just Walmart, but several other retailers as well. So as you talk to different suppliers mm -hmm. and you work with the different retailers, what are some things, probably three things, that every supplier should know before they pick the phone up and call you to, to start this ball rolling of, of consolidation? What are the, some of the, like, the top three things that you're going to want from them and they need to understand before they ever decide to move that way? Um, there's two aspects. There's a new supplier that's getting in and then there's an existing supplier. If, if you're an existing supplier, we're going to need your, your data. And so um, typically it comes from Retail Link and we sign non-disclosure agreements and you know, do everything to protect both parties. But with data, not just Retail Link data, but SKU, SKU spec information, your, your, for the each individual. weight, for, all of that Exactly. Stuff. For each individual SKU. Um, we can take that information and give you a delivered cost per case to Walmart for whatever period of time that you want measured and make it an exact comparison because we will go back and retroactively apply you know, fuel surcharge in the supply chain world adjusts on a weekly basis. Right. So we can go back a year and apply last September's fuel surcharge as it was for that particular shipment all the way through the entire year. So it is an exact comparison of what it cost them to ship their PO in September of 12 versus September of 13. Okay. And then with um, new suppliers? New supplier, the, the key would be working with their replenishment manager to get the store matrix and the expect, expected velocity by store that it's going to sell at. So if they can get us the expected sell-through rate we can take that information plus the SKU spec information and get a very accurate representation of what the cost from inbound perspective mm -hmm. through the warehouse and then distributed to Walmart is going to cost them. Whereas typically when they go to a, th a third party, the third party doesn't understand Walmart to the level that we have because we've been doing this for so long. Um, we've, we've been administering consolidation programs to Walmart since 2003. So okay. um, we understand Walmart very well and all the intricacies of how it works. Whereas if they just go to a third party in the marketplace, they're typically going to assume a full pallet in, full pallet out, and that is not an accurate representation of what your true cost deliver cost. If they say your deliver cost per case to Walmart is going to be a dollar, assuming full pallet in, full pallet yeah. out. It could really turn out to be three or four dollars, because Walmart it doesn't seem to have an appetite to build new distribution centers. So they're kind of costly. They're very expensive. Uh, so 
the way to alleviate the pressure in the warehouse is to go to assembly type orders instead of a, a warehouse type 20 order. There, you, we're seeing more type 33 POs. So we're talking assembly distribution or assembly ship and build? Ship and build. Okay, where so they go direct to the stores and not go through a distribution center. Well, it'll go to the distribution center, but it's a straight cross dock. Okay. So um, it allows the DC to be more of a flow through than a storage location. Well, a supplier go, a new supplier goes in with the perspective of I'm going to sell full pallets in, and this is, and it's which not is, reality. Which is great in theory. In theory, thinking but but it's not how yeah. it works. And so if they bid it to Walmart on a cost per case of a dollar, and it turns out to be three dollars, then their margins are gone. They're in trouble. Uh, they're, they're not going to. Um, be able to maintain the relationship with Walmart for very long. And it's very difficult to go back into the buyer and say, I need a price sorry, increase. I got a yes. price increase. Exactly. So okay. we're, because of the experience that we have and um, the ability to analyze data, we, we have built multiple tools where they can provide this information to us, we can put it into a tool and give it back to them, and they can actually go into their replenishment manager or buyer, sit down with them and say, hey, my deliver cost per case based upon these number of stores is this. But if you can give me, it can become a tool, if you right. can give me X amount of more stores in these locations, it comes down to this. And it allows both Walmart and the supplier to benefit because they, they see that they're, they're looking for that everyday low cost to get the everyday low price that the consumer needs on the shelf. And um, we provide tools that help them find that sweet spot. Okay, and if they want more information, they can get in touch with you. But I have a final question. What keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night is a very good question. Um, it is the omni-channel. And where is retail going in the future? I mean, there's so many gray areas that have been created by online, by private label, by um, vendors selling direct on their websites. Who is a retailer? Who is a, a supplier? The, the, the lines are blurred. Um, the expectations of the customers have been skewed because of Amazon, uh, expecting their product to be delivered next day for free. Um, so the Omnichannel creates a lot of challenges uh, for the retail community and for the supplier community uh, and for the service, the, the companies that service that, that community. So um, I don't think anyone's figured it out yet. There's a lot of challenges still to come, um, but it truly, it, being a logistician, my, my, bri my brain is just continually spinning trying to figure out a way to monetize or be able to take advantage of the, the omni-channel. Never changing. Okay, Colby, thank you very much. We want to thank Colby Beelan very much for joining us, and we want to thank you. We're out of time for now, but as always, we do appreciate you taking the time to join us. And if you have questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. Our email address is Saturday at EthanWalton.com. Be sure to join us next week as we sit down with Chuck Hyde, the CEO of the Sodaqua Center, and we'll talk about leadership and team building. That's all coming up next week on Saturday Morning Meeting.